about partnerships. Maybe you can tell us why partnerships are so important to Mastercard. You know, our whole business model is predicated on partnerships. It started off partnering with the bank, but today we're partnering with other firms, for example, IBM, to launch our trust product, Truarte, that helps companies solve the problem of how to comply with the new privacy laws. And you also, on a similar theme, have done a partnership with Microsoft, looking into future forms of identity. Maybe you can tell us more about that. Yeah, this is very exciting, the work we're doing with Microsoft on digital identity, because at the root of inclusion, you've got digital identity. If you think, if you're a woman born in certain parts of the world, you have no birth certificate, no passport, probably no driver's license. Digital identity is going to be your route to being included in the internet of everything. And that's why we're very excited to be launching our platform with Microsoft. When will that platform launch? We're launching in Australia, um, actually in a, in a couple of months' time. And the great thing about the thing that we're designing is it's not one monolithic platform, but actually the identity information is going to be grabbed from different areas, you know, maybe from the passport office, from your bank, from the driver's license office, and to recreate an identity for someone. And this will be a much safer way to do it because the information is held by those trusted parties and, uh, and move together to create whatever level of identity you need. So you've talked about sort of technical type partnerships. So there are other partnerships which are more involved in sort of social reform and so on. I believe you're working with the Rockefeller Foundation. Maybe you can tell us about that. You know, in Davos this year, we announced this deal with the Rockefeller Foundation where we both put 25 million each in to create a pool of $50 million to look at specifically data philanthropy, to look at how we can use data for good. And, uh, and everyone's very excited about data. There's so much in the press about it, but I think there is a great opportunity to use it in a very positive way to help people. Can you give us any details on the, the kind of products or services that might emerge out of that partnership? Well, I actually think that, you know, it's early days yet to give you details on that particular partnership. But, for example, um, data is starting to be used a lot in the, in the medical space to be able to help people get, you know, a better diagnosis of what's happening to them, to actually help them get the right kind of medication for their genetic makeup. All of these kind of things are possible in today's world. So another interesting partnership is Neobank, which is uh, a partnership which plays to the whole idea of Challenger and new digital banks. Maybe you can tell us more about that. Yeah, Neobanks are rising up around the world. Um, it can be things like N26 from Germany, um, it could be New Bank from Brazil, it could be Moniz from the UK. And these banks have no branches, but they're actually reaching out to the general public and offering them new products and services directly through the internet. And we work with all of these banks, Monzo, Starling, um, across Europe to actually develop new products and it's very exciting because they move very quickly, uh, they have customer bases that adopt things quickly and, um, and they're great to work with from that point of view. So clearly um, for financial services companies trust is very very important and most of your partnerships eventually play into that whole idea. Completely. Maybe you can tell us more about your thinking on that. Yeah, I mean basically I think that it's very important to have something that everyone trusts in the financial world and, and, and the whole idea of what we're doing behind Mobile World Congress is based on trust. And in order to have that trust, you have to develop new products and services that make people feel safe, but at the same time are very easy to use. So some of the latest technology we've been using in the artificial intelligence space, um, buying companies and working with companies to develop um, you know, new identity recognition techniques. For example, if you picked a pho my phone up and tried to use it to make a payment, the technology would know that you keyed differently from me, just from your behavior, and it would stop that transaction because it would say, hey, that's not our. It's that type of technology that we're bringing to the corner. Excellent. And thanks for joining us. Thank, and thank you for